everybody. We are live here in Fountain Valley. <clears throat> there are about a thousand people, probably more at this point, showing up for the launch of World of Warcraft Cataclysm. Things have been going on since about nine o'clock. Uh, we've had dance contests, we've had a bunch of stuff going on. We've actually been here earlier. We were here first thing in the morning, we hung out at Blizzard, got a, got a look at the campus and talked to some folks there. So. Right now, we're about to kick off some musical performances that are going to lead us up right into the launch of Cataclysm, which is the biggest, baddest expansion for World of Warcraft. And Azeroth is about to get jacked up, unfortunately. But that means good things for all those of us who like to play, because everything old is new again. Um, before we start taking you around to some of the folks here, we're going to show you some of the stuff that we did today. So let's take a look. U.S. launch event for World of Warcraft Cataclysm. Let me hear it, guys. I, I really, I, at first I just want to thank you guys. Thank you for letting us come here and, and celebrate the launch of Cataclysm with you and, and stay here with you while you wait in line. Just real briefly, I want to tell you what's going to happen and then we'll go over it a couple more times throughout the night, but we'll get it out of the way early. So as you know, all of you should have wristbands, and those wristbands have numbers on them. If you do not have a wristband, if you came late, you can get your wristband at the very back. It's at the lit up entrance sign. And then towards midnight, what's going to happen is we're going to be moving 20 of you at a time into another line. That'll be your third line for the evening. And from that point, you'll get to go into the store, get your game, and you'll be able to get it signed. And it's going to be one box per wristband. Does that all make sense? Yeah. All right? You're only going to have to hear that about two more times tonight, so that's good. Listen, before we get started, I want to intro my partner in crime, Kim Fun. Kim! Hey, how's it going? So um, tonight, I'll be hanging out with most of you guys out in the crowd, where it's probably going to be a lot more warmer. So we're going to keep you warm. And um, yeah, later on, we'll also do the dance contest up here. But we have a lot going on. So. We do have a lot going on. Actually, what we're going to be doing tonight is we're going to be looking at a lot of cinematics on this big, beautiful screen we have back here. And it'll be cinematics from the past and then some stuff we have from Cataclysm. Tavern Band's gonna be playing this afternoon. And of course, the artist formerly known as Level 80 Tour and Chieftain has a big concert for you tonight. It's gonna have a t-shirt too, so this is what you guys can hopefully uh, snatch right here. So Kim, I don't know if you know this or not, but before tonight, the largest PC gaming launch in history was set by Blizzard for World of Warcraft, Wrath, ah, World of Warcraft, Wrath of the Lich King. Yep. All right, so you think we're gonna shatter those records tonight with Cataclysm? Yeah! I don't know. I think I think we should check the crowd out real quick first. Kim, what do you think? Definitely. I mean, they've been waiting for I don't know how long here. So it's almost, we're almost there. Hey, real, real quick, I want you to raise your hand if you have uh, if you've been here if you got here before today. See all these people in front of the line. <laughs> that is core, guys. I'm serious. All right, Cam, I want you to check the audience right now. I want to see if your people are here. All right, she's going to want to do this battle cry thing, so I only get one chance to do this. So you guys better make it loud. I want to know, where's the horde at? The horde may have a better battle cry, but they certainly are not the loudest. I want to hear it from the alliance out there! That's right! Why do you have to be so negative? Why do you have to be so negative? Seriously. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Alliance battle cry. Yeah, that's because the horde are negative. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're here to play what? We're here to play Cataclysm! That, that was really cool. <laughs> so, you guys have been out here for a while, and you're going to be here for a couple more hours. So let's just start a chant here. I want to hear you guys say, Cataclysm! Come on, Cataclysm! 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 Uh, side 
Rogers edition for the people who have been here an amazing amount of time. And they brought projectors, they brought tents, they were here in the rain last night. I think they need some props. So can we hear it for Frank Pierce? Let's bring Frank out on stage. Alright, that sounds better. Oh, Pat, you're not staying up here with me? No, it's all you, darling. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Cataclysm launch event. Thanks to everyone for coming out and celebrating the evening with us. Uh, your presence tonight here is a great example of the amazing dedication and passion shared by our Blizzard community. Uh, everything that, that is great about World of Warcraft wouldn't be possible without all of you. Uh, so we're always, we're always humbled and honored to have so many folks here, especially since it's colder than a Yeti's ass out here. Uh, we love to meet and interact with our fans face to face, so please feel free to say hello to any of the Blizzard folks that you bump into tonight. Hi guys. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to have, take this opportunity to uh, have all of you help me thank some of the teams from Blizzard that made uh, Cataclysm our biggest and most awesome expansion yet. So um, can you guys help me out? I want to thank the Online Technologies team, uh, our Cinematics team, they do all the amazing pre-rendered stuff you guys see. Blizzard Online Network Services team is responsible for the hardware infrastructure that you guys play on. Thanks for those guys, too. And can you guys give a big thanks to the World of Warcraft development team for me, please? Cool. And <laughs> a big thank you to all the other Blizzard teams that were involved in making Cataclysm awesome as well. Good job, thank you everyone for your help with that. Uh, we're incredibly excited about the release tonight. We're launching Cataclysm in seven different languages and countries all around the world. There are nearly 5,000 new quests for you guys to go out and complete. We've got a completely shattered and revamped old world. Uh, brand new level 80 to 85 content. We've got some of the most challenging end game content to date. Are you guys ready to have your asses handed to you by Deathwing? <laughs> All right, we know you guys are the hardest of the hardcore, so we'd like to take a minute to express some of our gratitude and appreciation to uh, some of the folks that camped out overnight in the pouring rain to be first in line. So who, who are we bringing up to thank? Curtis, Curtis McHenry and crew. John, Paul, Curtis, Baxter, thanks guys, really appreciate you uh, de dedicating yourself to this. Um, we've got signed, what are we giving them? Who's helping me out here? Jeez. Signed Cataclysm Collector's Editions for you guys. Go ahead and give those to those guys. You can't keep the models, I'm sorry. Thank you so much, guys, for being there. Standing next to one of the people that Frank Pierce addressed. This is Justin, who's all decked out for the occasion. So, how long have you been playing Warcraft? Since the release of Vanilla WoW. Nice. Uh, how many high-level characters do you have? I have eight level 80s. And how long did that take you? Not as long as it should, that's for sure. All right. So, obviously, Cataclysm, huge deal. What do you think about the changes that they're making to the world? I'm really excited. It's bringing it back to its old roots with all the uh, advantages of raiding and everything for between how the strategies for fights are going for CC and tanking and everything. No more tank and spank. So now the way this expansion works, it's not just new content. With the way the world's getting jacked up, you're going to have a choice. 
So are you going to level your high levels all the way up, or are you actually going to re-roll and kind of see what the new 1 to 60 is like? Got to get my level 85 first, but definitely after I have to re-roll and see what the new world's all about. All right, now, you've got to know Horde Alliance. Definitely Horde. Right. Now, why? Because this is, you know, this is a class that's gotten a lot of flack. I've played both, and Alliance are nice, but strategically, fully fail. Now, tell us about your hat. Did you make this? No, a lady back there was doing it for donations, for charity. So, it's awesome. Had some spare change, a couple dollars. So, was a good deal. All right, so tell us about um, your racing class. I mainly play my undead discipline priest, but I, my uh, achievement character is my enhancement shaman. Um, I have a lot of characters. <laughs> Anyone you specifically want to know about? Yeah. So, so what's your favorite to play? That would be my priest for most occasions, but going two-handed shaman's always fun to rape some battlegrounds. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Justin. Um, we're going to let you get back in line, get your copy of the game, get it autographed, and we're going to check out one of the interviews we did today over at Blizzard with J. Allen Brack. I think the biggest thing I'm excited about is you know the changed world. We actually released the changed world on the 23rd of November for our U.S. players. Um, being able to go back and redo the one through 60 experience and have players re-experience the the new one through 60 experience is, is really exciting. Um, having the new races and allowing them to go through that uh, kind of their own starting ex starting experience and then the new you know the rest of the one through 60 is is pretty exciting. As a game developer, it's always exciting to be able to look at what you feel like are your biggest mistakes and go back and, and go back and retroactively fix them. Um, and that's certainly one of the motives for us doing the Cataclysm, right? You know, we, we totally took the worst zone in the game, which was Ashara, and just completely destroyed it in every possible way and made it, you know, basically a completely fresh, brand new zone. Um, in Darkshore, where, it's where Aberdeen was, we feel like the, the level design for Aberdeen, or for uh, Darkshore rather, was was pretty good, but the quest flow was really, really, really terrible. Um, so we took advantage of uh, both those zones to kind of go back and say, okay, let's rework the quest flow, let's rework some of the, the elements here, let's bring a lot of excitement back into or into, uh, into Darkshore, you know, and then having Aberdeen featured in the intro cinematic and then having players go and actually see the destroyed ruins of Aberdeen is obviously very cool for both us to work with the cinematics team and make that, make that a reality. It's really easy for us to just get into our own mode of, of making the game. And, you know, for a long time, you know, we've got 140 people on the team, on the World of Warcraft team, that, you know, we're just doing our thing and working on it. And it's been really, uh, I think it's got a lot of people by surprise, the, the reaction. And it's got a lot of people by surprise in terms of how big the expansion actually is going to be. You know, I think probably one of the silliest things that at least is close to my heart is uh, we did a, an homage to Plants vs. Zombies. Uh, we actually have a series of quests in Hillsborough Foothills, which uh, actually you where you play Plants vs. Zombies the game. And if you're successful at completing that, that quest series, you actually get a little pet with uh, it's like a little singing sunflower pet, which is really cool. And we did that, uh, you know, with the, the PopCap guys we have a, a good relationship with, and we're really excited about their games, and they're really excited about WoW having, you know, worked on some, some add-ons that, that put some of their games into WoW. Um, so this was just a really nice homage for that. We saw Deathwing in Warcraft 2, and so it's really neat to see the little sprite-based dragon actually come to life in a little bit more of a 3D type environment. Um, so, so that's, you know, that's obviously very cool. I think the storytelling that we've done in the zones, in the old zones, as well as the 80 through 85 zones, are far, you know, far surpassed the stuff that we did for the Death Knight starting experience. And so, you know, I really think we've set the, the bar for storytelling in an MMO um, as, high as, it's, as high as it's been to date, uh, which I think is really exciting for the players, and I think it'll be, you know, something that's very well received. So far it's uh, going pretty great. Uh, we started to get a lot of pictures come in from uh, people lining up around the world. There was a news story, I guess, that came out on Saturday that the first guy for the Anaheim Fries event tonight had, uh, had lined up. Uh, I felt really bad for that guy over the weekend because it was pretty rainy and kind of crappy weather, but it, it's, it's really nice right now, and so he'll have a, a good day leading up to the site. Lots of people lined up in Moscow. There's lots of people lined up in Berlin. There's lots of people lined up in Paris. There's lots of people lined up in London, and just having people like send their little 
uh, their little shots of, of people lined up is, is hugely exciting. It's, it just gives us a lot of energy as developers to actually see how excited the fans are. The mood of the office is there's, there's always a lot of anxiety. We're always nervous about how things are going to go. We've got you know, 12,000 things that need to get wrapped up between now and, and, and midnight tonight. Um, here in an hour or so, I'll walk into our war room. Uh, Europe is actually going to be the first territory to go live. They're going to go live at 3 o'clock our time, so a little, little less than two hours. Um, so that'll be really exciting. They'll be actually the first players to actually get to see the game. So we're in the last little bit here, trying to make everything come together and make sure it goes great. We got a sound test going on in the background, so we're not gonna. We're gonna be yelling at you guys, basically. So I'm sitting here with uh, Tom Chilton, game director of World of Warcraft, who's soaking in the crowd. What do you think of this? I mean, you guys have been working on this for a really long time. I know it's it's really exciting. It's finally real, you know, after several years. <laughs> You've basically been on this from the beginning, more you know, since not too long before the, the first one shipped. You put a lot of work into creating the Azeroth that we all know and love. What's it like seeing it totally raised? Right. Well, it's really exciting on one hand. I mean, the, I, I would say the new content is definitely really fun, and anybody that ever fell in love with WoW is going to fall in love with the new content for sure. Um, at, sa at the same time, there's all that nostalgia of the old. <laughs> so I think a bunch of us did our due diligence, and we kind of did a tour of the world kind of spilled a 40 on the ground for, for what was there. Did you happen to take a last look around the servers before it all kind of went to hell? <laughs> Absolutely did, yeah. I, I mean, I went through and did some leveling up of a character in the old you know content one last time before it, it finally went live. And you know, knowing that it's, it's not gonna be easy to get that experience once again, but I'm really psyched to see the new stuff. It's, it's for sure really fun. Now, what's it like for you to see all these people here for this thing you've been working on? Because I'm sure you guys have been nose to the grindstone for a while yeah we have been it's awesome to see everybody here i mean it's just a really it's a tribute and we're really happy to be here now what's the one thing you would urge everybody that's going to get this game to do what the first thing they do when they fire it up well i have no idea what you just said City of Ashir and get from level 80 to 81. Alright man, thanks Tom. Alright, so basically what you hear in the background is the elite Tauran Chieftain or the artist formerly known as that. Let's check him out. The Alliance knows all about the valor. And I know for sure they know all about the power of the horde! Earth and fire. He Sorry, Alliance. <laughs> All right, Alliance and Horde, scream for me! Rock. Hello there. Alright! Come on, guys! I am the son of the wind and rain! Thunder beckons, I heed the call! And if I die upon the estate, in battle I will fall! Give me brothers, gather up the wolves! To battle we will rise! Just echo the beating heart Counting from inside Score! Black clouds fill up sky Earth! I hear my battle cry Fire! And thunder will bring forth death
What's your favorite song, right, Alliance? Maybe one day we'll do an Alliance song. <laughs> it's nice to dream. All right. Now, this next song has nothing to do with World of Warcraft. How many of you were here, let's see, four or five months ago? All right. Do you know what I'm talking about? When Blizzard released StarCraft II Wings of Liberty. Nice. Huh? Okay. All right. So, this next song is not Goblin. It is not Worgen. But it is Terran of the Night!
getting hard to hear y'all over here. a little bit but right now we're going to give you a look at the blizzard campus where we spent some of the afternoon today checking out it's a pretty cool place this is just a taste of what they got going on over there
music's bumping, and look who we bumped into. Some of you guys may or may not remember Bethany, friend of the family. So what are you doing here? Hi! I can't hear you, but I'm here for Cataclysm, and it's awesome. All right, what's the first thing you're going to do when you fire up the game? Um, I'm going to buy my flying skill, I'm going to get on my Phoenix, I'm going to fly around Azeroth and show it off to everybody, and then I'm going to go to Hyjal and level up a whole bunch. Very nice. So you're digging the music right now, but earlier today, there was a different kind of music playing. What would you think of the tavern band? The tavern band is one of my favorites. I have that music on my I listen to that stuff all the time. Like in the kitchen, I'm cooking, I'm like, whatever. I'm like serving a bunch of dwarves and shit. Great. All right, so for those of you that don't know what the Tavern Band's all about, we actually have an excerpt of the set they played earlier today. So let's check that out. Kind of a change of pace of this. But don't worry, we'll come back with a lot more of this in just a bit. most exciting thing for Cataclysm is really just the concept of changing the entire world like we did, um, you know, and just seeing how that kind of gets received with the fan base and see, you know, people kind of come back for sentimentality and really want to kind of see how these lands have changed that they fell in love with once before.
the, the first glimpse we got into how people are going to respond to Cataclysm was really at BlizzCon when we announced it. And we showed some screenshots and video footage from some of the lands and how we changed them. We showed like before and after pics. And to kind of see, you know, the BlizzCon audience, which is the hardest core of our, our fan base, and just how emotional they got and how excited they were about it really kind of clued us in to how people are going to probably start receiving this. From the very beginning, one of the things that we, we've kind of long wanted to do with World of Warcraft, like especially as we started working on Burning Crusade and we started working on Lich King, you know, we, we would all reroll characters and kind of play through that old content and we just kind of always wished we could go back and change things and make things the way that we can make them now. You know, we have lots of technology now, we have lots of techniques, we have a lot more talented developers than we've ever had before and there was always that hope we'd be able to kind of go back and change things and bring things up to kind of the standards we now hold for ourselves. Pearl. Whenever it's uh, time to add like whatever the major feature it's going to be, be it races or a new class or anything like that, people get pretty passionate on the team and really across the company. Um, this particular time, you know, was definitely pretty passionate in that we knew from the beginning that we wanted to do goblins, and there was really a lot of debate on how we should do goblins and should goblins be on one of the sides or should we maybe try to do them as a neutral race or how we want to do them. And and there was also a lot of people I think on the team that felt like they're maybe a little bit too goofy. You know, like, do we really need to add another kind of gnome-style race? So, you know, coming up with the Wargans really came on later, and it was really through just some of the, the art team really drawing some really cool concepts that really kind of gathered that momentum. I would say um, the most surprising thing to me now when, when I get to play whatever the newest expansion is that I'm far enough away now that I don't get to play the content really in, through play tests. You know, I play it much later, you know, pretty close to the actual release. So it, I almost get to experience it almost like a player, which is really exciting to me, you know, being really involved in World of Warcraft early on and through the first couple expansions and, and now playing almost more like a player and like a fan. It, it's really been really fun. I think any time that you make an entertainment product or you make a fantasy world or anything like that, you're never going to expect a success like the level of World of Warcraft and certainly not expect people to fall in love with the lore and the world to the degree that they do. It's just something that I think we just take immense pride in the fact that you know, we'll be able to create this world and we'll be able to really make it something that people care about and they do care about the lore and they do care about the storylines and the characters. Uh, launch day is, is always kind of an exciting day at the studio and especially on the dev team itself, you know, because I, I think um, it's a little bit different than it was in years past though because, you know, we wait so long now after we've kind of changed it, you know, we've gotten all the code locked down and we know what the game's going to be and then there's kind of this long wait. You know, like in years past, like I remember back during um, StarCraft, you know, it was on store shelves just like a couple days after we finished the game. So, you know, it really, you know, it was a, we had that gratification right afterwards. Now it's, it's like this delayed thing that happens and you're almost, it's almost a little more surreal. Like, is today really launch day? It's actually going out there? Because we've been done for a while and now it kind of goes out there and you get to really see the effect of the launch and really that excitement. It's really amazingly exciting to kind of see the fans get excited and see them waiting in line and seeing them sometimes loop around the fries and Fountain Valley and hearing how excited they are and really get to interact with them because, you know, for us, we've been working on the game for a year, two years, in some cases for many years. And when you kind of get to walk that line and you get to see how excited they are and you get to see people you know, really talking to each other about what they're going to do tonight and what they're going to play and what they're excited about, you know, it, it really gives you an insight into the game, the game design and the way that people love this game. I think when people pick up Cataclysm, they really need to decide what it is that they want to play first and where they want to go with it. I think a lot of players are probably going to take their existing character immediately to the level cap. And I think you're also going to see some players that, you know, want to be the first Worgen or the first Goblin of any particular class. For me, you know, I'm just going to be excited to try to get my flying mount so I can fly over all over the old world. I just want to say that after all these years, you know, I really hope that the fans that are still playing World of Warcraft really enjoy Cataclysm and really, you know, can see that the love that the development team has put into this product and see, you know, how much that we love this as much as the fans do. We kind of tricked out the audience with GameSpot people just because we could. So, Jody, when did you get here? Uh, when did I get here? Like, at 6 o'clock, but I left at like at 9 in the morning. Alright, so just to be clear, you, you drove down here today. For this. Fans, I 
I've never been to BlizzCon, so it was the perfect opportunity to just try it, get a taste of it, and then now I really, I, I need to go to BlizzCon. If it's anything like this, I gotta try it out, so. Now the trip over wasn't exactly a cakewalk, right? You have a story you gotta tell the kids. Well, I wanted to really get here in time, so I kinda got a speeding ticket, but not because I'm a bad person, because I just really wanted to get here fast, and I just didn't think I was gonna get here in time, so. All right, and you also dragged Bethany down here too, right? Yeah, I convinced her that it was really important, and she said, yeah, nerdy things have to happen. That was her, her slogan, but her big thing was that she was going to Blizzney land. Now, the crazy part is, you're not actually gonna sleep, right? When this is done, you're gonna, you guys are gonna grab your copies of WoW, and what are you gonna do, play, right? Uh, I, you know, I, I drove so many hours with the traffic, I'm thinking about getting a hotel here, but the reality was I had plans at like one o'clock to drive back and, you know, another eight hours to get home by 8 a.m. to get to work by a little, a little late, so. All right, I'm your boss. You can chill here if you want for a little while. It's cool. Okay. <laughs> now, what's been your favorite part of the thing so far? I think uh, a lot of it is like you see the people dressed up. The dancing was pretty cool because I've never seen people actually do not too bad. And obviously the bands are just amazing because you kind of, you you don't get that vibration. I don't have a big sound system. So when you feel it, you just feel even theater, like the trailers I've seen back, you know, years ago, seeing it here live was just like, just like, oh my God, I feel sensitive. <laughs> so yeah, I get kind of like choked up because I really like the franchise and just like the, the gaming. They're just, they just keep up with the games and yeah. So it's like a part of me. So yes, I was crazy for driving out. Nice. Now you talked about the dance contest. We actually had a chance to check out the dance contest at BlizzCon, which was even bigger than this and crazier. Yeah. Um, but we've actually got a sample of the dance contest that they had here. You know, it's pretty freaking good. So what is your name? My name is Atesh. Atesh, where are you from? Westminster. Oh, not too far. So Atesh, what are you uh, going to be dancing for everybody? Goblin female.
official. The cataclysm is here, and we are live in the United States. We made it. Can you believe it? Yeah.